Shalom, everyone. Welcome back. Many people are familiar with the Liberty Bell in um, Philadelphia, which is really a symbol of American freedom, the whole idea of freedom. But on the Liberty Bell, there's a, a curious inscription, which really says it all. This inscription is actually found in this week's Torah portion, in uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 10, where it says in the Hebrew, Ukratzem dror ba'aretz l'chol yoshveha. You should proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. And this is written in right on the Liberty Bell, that the idea of freedom is a basic tenet in Judaism and in American life. What does this refer to, actually? The verse in the Torah is actually referring to the Yovel, the Jubilee year. We're, we told that we need to count seven years, and then there's a sabbatical year in, in Israel in which the land rests. But every 49 years, seven years times seven years, every 49 years or 50th year, there is a Jubilee year called the Yovel. And the Yovel has special characteristics that are even greater than the Jubilee year. For example, all slaves, all Hebrew slaves are freed during the Yovel year. And that's what it's really actually referring to. The freedom, proclaim uh, freedom in the land refers to the Hebrew slaves that have been uh, slaves until now. And in the Yovel year, they are free. Let's talk a little bit about the idea of freedom. Are we all free? Is freedom something that we live by? Well, in most cases, you could say yes. Um, you, you can go wherever you want. You can say whatever you want in our country anyways, and probably in many, many countries throughout the world. Uh, when uh, the Soviet Union fell, people were very happy because now they could, they could express freedom. They could be free. And they didn't have to be worrying about things, saying things that would cause them to be end up in the gulag in the Soviet prison camps in Siberia. Uh, during the times of the Nazi era, uh, people were certainly not free either. People can, ask, people can ask themselves, what would I rather have, freedom or prosperity, or freedom and security? Uh, interestingly, many people would say, I'd rather have security than freedom. I'd rather have food on my table. I'd rather have medical insurance uh, to take care of me if I got sick. Uh, I'd rather have the basic needs of life, even though I may not be so free. And it's understandable because after all, people want security. Uh, people want to, be, to know that they have food on the table and their needs are taken care of. And if they're not so free, for example, in many countries in the world, in, in North Korea or in Cuba, or in many other countries, the people do not enjoy such freedom. But on the other hand, they have many of their needs are taken care of as well. And uh, people prefer that. Many people prefer that. There was a saying during the Cold War that some of you might remember. It said, better dead than red. In other words, rather than be a, be a communist, I'd rather be dead. So freedom was something that was a very precious commodity. During uh, the world, the World War II, we said that we fought for freedom. We fought in Vietnam during the Vietnamese War to ensure freedom for the Vietnamese people who were being um, persecuted and overrun by the North Korean communist, North Vietnamese communists. And the same thing about the Korean War. But the truth is, are we really free? Are we? Can we do whatever we want? In reality, no. We have to pay taxes. There are many laws we have to observe. We can't go over the speed limit. We, we have to uh, obey many, many laws regarding our fellow man. We can't hurt another person. And Congress is very, very busy all the time in making more laws and more laws for us to observe. We think, well, you know, every January the 1st, uh, the newspapers print new laws. Now you have to do this and you can't do that. Now you can do this and you can't do that. Every year there seem to be more and more laws. Uh, and uh, this becomes very tiresome and burdensome on people, but it curtails our freedom in many respects, although these things can be very good. 
because they cause us not to harm each other, not to hurt each other. And indeed, sometimes the curtailing of freedom is not such a bad thing, but it has to be done with compassion and it has to be done with the will of the people, that the people themselves have to decide what they want and how they can live. A story is told about um, a, a young man who joined a cult. And what was this cult? Well, I'll tell you what the cult was in a moment. But this cult required that he dress in a particular uniform, particular way, and he was strictly not allowed to deviate from that particular dress code. He was told when to eat, when to sleep. He had to wear his hair very, very short. He had to obey without question his superiors and follow orders very, very strictly. He was to be to go where he was sent, and he had very little choice in the matter. He had to learn how to uh, act, how to do everything in life. Now, what cult are we talking about? Are we talking about uh, the Moonies? Are we talking about some crazy uh, cult, Christian cult or Hindu cult? Actually, we're talking about the United States Marine Corps, where they tell us exactly how to dress and where to go and what to do and obeying orders and when to eat, when to sleep, and on and on and on. And indeed, when a person joins the army, they have to curtail many of their freedoms. But many people choose to do just that because of the advantages of the military life and what it gives them. So freedom itself is a very good thing, but freedom also has certain limitations to it and needs to have certain limitations to it. We Jews are called Ovde Hashem, servants of God. We are indeed servants of God. And as servants, we are told when to eat, when to, when to sleep, what to eat, when to rest, the Shabbos, for kosher food. Uh, what, how to dress with a yarmulke, with tzitzis, modesty, etc., etc. The Torah tells us in great detail exactly how to live and what to do and what not to do. And the reason is because God cares about us. God is concerned about us. And therefore, just like a caring parent is concerned about their child, doesn't let their child just run around without any boundaries, without any rules and regulations, so God tells us exactly how he wants us to live as well. Well, freedom is a very good thing, but freedom also has its limitation. It should have its limitations. And as we are continuing the holiday of Shavuos, just in a, a few weeks, where God gave the Torah at Mount Sinai, he gave us a strict law, rule, he gave us a strict uh, set of rules and laws and regulations to follow. He did that because he loves us. So when freedom is... When, when freedom or rules are given out of love, then they are the most precious of all. I want to wish you all a good week, and uh, we'll speak to you again on Friday.